Hello, welcome to this section of the Statistics Tutor. Here we're going to continue talking about frequency distributions, just giving you a little more practice, introducing a couple of additional concepts. None of them are hard, but I kind of wanted to break it up from the last section to kind of let you digest the basic concept. Here we're going to kind of get into just a couple of additional things. So we've talked about the frequency, we've talked about the classes, we've talked about, uh, you know, uh, writing down the class widths and things like that. Now I need to talk about something that sounds complicated, but it's not complicated. It's called the relative frequency. The relative frequency. Relative frequency. What it is, is the percentage, so I'm going to say the percentage, like that, of the data, of the data set, that falls uh, in a class. All right, so it's the relative frequency. So notice that there's a percentage involved. Basically what relative uh, frequency does is it's another way of representing your frequency distribution in terms of some percentages, which can really help visualize very easily what's going on with the data. Because don't forget the main reason we use frequency distributions is to take a large amount of data and make it easily digestible. All right, so if I had to write this down, the relative frequency, I'll say RF like this, is equal to the class frequency over the sum of the frequencies, the all the frequencies added together. So I say sum, I have this big symbol here, you'll see what that means in a second, of the frequencies in all of the classes. This symbol right here just means I'm adding up all the frequencies in my table. This symbol here, this sigma here, you need to kind of get used to seeing that. When you see it, it just means you add lots of things together. Now also remember, just to kind of point something out to you, uh, earlier we said that when we have a frequency distribution like that, all the frequencies are listed. Those are just the, the data that we've collected, we've put into different buckets. If we add up all the frequencies, um, that basically just means how many people responded. That's, that's the sum of all of our raw data. So when we add up the frequencies, you can kind of say that this is also called the sample size n. We call it the sample size n. Uh, n is typically used to represent sample size. Don't worry so much why we call it n. It's just a, it's just a number. It's just a letter. So the relative frequency is the class frequency divided by all of the frequencies in your table. All right, now this looks complicated. It's very, very simple. Let's go ahead and come over here and say, let's find a, uh, or let's look at the frequency distribution of the age of people when buying a first car. Notice a lot of the frequency distributions that I've been using are like the ages of people. I mean, a frequency distribution can be used for anything, anything numeric. I like to use ages a lot in these examples because they're easy for you to visualize and kind of suck it in and understand what it's talking about. All right, so here is our distribution. We have a class, right? We have a frequency. And then over here, we're going to do this part later, but we have a relative frequency. Right, so let me put a line under there, a line under there, a line under 